The basic problem we have today is a problem on both sides, on the enterprise side and as well as on the, te on the IT side, the technology side. And that's a misperception of what enterprise architecture is or what it's all about. It's perceived to be a model building exercise, an IT technology model building exercise. It doesn't relate to the enterprise or the reality of the enterprise. So, therefore, it's overhead. You know, it's like, you know, general administrative costs. It's indirect. It's not, it's not main line, but, but it's because it's perceived to, to be something for building systems. And the basic problem is that from a technology perspective, IT perspective, as soon as you think you want to build systems, it's going to take you into producing a composite, a manufacturing view. You're going to, you're going to aggravate the problem rather than helping the problem. You're not engineering the enterprise. You're manufacturing parts of the enterprise. You're, de you're, you're disintegrating it. Okay, so from a general management standpoint, they don't really care about architecture and they probably don't even care about engineering the enterprise. If they understood the implications of it, they might be more interested. But if you can get in by starting to solve some of their problems, it'll, it buys you the opportunity to do some architecture. But the problem, probably the biggest problem, is to get the opportunity to work on it, either internally in IT and even IT people see it as overhead or indirect or not contributing to, you know, the, the building, the directly building and running the system. And from a general management standpoint, you know, when things get really difficult, the first thing to go is anything that's indirect and enterprise architecture is a major candidate. The CIO, the, federal, the first CIO of the federal government in the U.S., uh, he, he was he was very proud of terminating enterprise architecture projects because they take a long time and cost a lot of money and he would be he was proud of saving the federal government billions of dollars lots of money on spent on architecture and he would say they produce a picture that goes on a shelf and never affects reality okay he probably was right see because if you produce a composite picture is a composite has everything in this in the picture it's going to go, it's, a fi it's fixed, it's a snapshot at a point in time. It's only good for the moment. So therefore, it goes on the shelf. And then you can spend a lot, you, the more things you put in that model, the longer it's going to take you to build it. And the high probability is it's not, you know, you, you, by the time you get it done, it's not, not relevant anymore, okay? So he was probably right. Now, he and I were uh, talking at the same conference, and I told, I, I did, 20 minutes, a half an hour on my framework, which you guys saw me do a, half, a day. I did 20 minutes, and I basically said, this is to a, a fairly big conference, and, and I said, basically, this is where the future is going. You know, if you can't, you don't have architecture, you're not going to be able to manage complexity and change and whatever. And then this guy got up after I talked, and he said, I terminated a bunch of enterprise architecture projects, and uh, and uh, you know they cost a lot of money, and I saved the federal government. Somebody from the floor said, "Well, you and Mr. Zachman seem to have different opinion about enterprise architecture." And this guy, I happen to know the guy not well. He's not a friend, but he's I know, know him. He said, "Well, yeah, yeah we, we have a we have a basic difference of opinion." And he left. He didn't even wasn't graceful enough to say goodbye. You know, like we they had lunch at the same table, and so he, it was embarrassing for him. I, it, but I think the guy was right. I mean, I wasn't because enterprise architecture is a, is perceived to be, you know, some complicated, big, massive, you know, single picture that has everything in it, and uh, you know. It, it, and it probably doesn't do much. It doesn't affect reality. So, but those are the problems, you know. That we, because we, the IT people, come from manufacturing, we we think in terms of the composite picture, and the enterprise management they don't really care about architecture, and they don't they don't want to put forth the effort to understand it or use it. So they don't see any relevance to it. So the way to resolve it. Solve some of their problems. That buys you time to get in. You also, we, the IT people, need to uh, get uh, get our perception correct. Uh, I usually say, if the enterprise understands architecture, well, let me say it this way first. If IT understands architecture and the general management don't understand architecture, 
IT, IT can do architecture whether they know it or not and have an impact on the enterprise. The converse of that does not work. If the general management understands architecture and wants to use it and IT doesn't believe it, general management is going nowhere. Okay? They don't have a, the ability to do anything with it. So we, IT, we're our, our own worst enemy. You know, basically, if we, if we think the end object is building and running systems, it will take us right down the path to, to building composite implementation models, not architecture. On the other hand, if we begin to get the idea, you know, then we can start doing architecture whether they, whoever they are, understand it or not. I mean, I talked around that issue about what's the fun, the, the biggest problem now. But it's a problem. My, most of the companies, especially small companies or Latin American companies, doesn't have uh, people dedicated to the uh, management of the change. Mm -hmm. If you don't uh, see the importance of change or theoretical approach to the uh, change management, it's very difficult. I, you know, I think this is really a several. That's a really a good issue. One, one thing is uh, the reason you do architecture is because of complexity and change. So the small enterprise. They're really vulnerable. Boy, we lost a lot of small enterprises in 2008. You know, the recession hits, it's global. Nobody is independent anymore. We're all in the same game here. And uh, there's, a, there's a terrible problem out there. They're very vulnerable because they don't have this, the in-house capability to do the architecture work themselves. And they don't perceive the uh, complexity and change issue. I. I did it years ago, not in my friend Sunil, the, the Indian guy. I was in India years ago before Sunil. And I did, would talk to a CXO audience, in effect. And, they, and I don't know who the, is in the room, but one, one of those people came up to me, I, and there are probably, I don't know, 50 people in the room. One of those guys came up to me, I did three hours. And I did basically the introductory material you saw me do. Just here's what the information age looks like. Here's about complexity and change. Yeah, and you know, just introducing the subject, saying, you know, the only way to deal with complexity and change is architecture. And one of those CEOs came up to me and said, that was the best three hours I ever spent in my entire life. See, because they, they don't have the, you know, to, to stop and to think abstractly and begin to and see, understand what the, the problem is from an abstract enterprise perspective. They, they don't have time to stress levels too high. So, you know, I think the way to do it is to, is to uh, use the metaphor, you know, say, look, at, you can't have a building. I mean, if you're building log cabins, fine. But if you want a 100-story building for whatever reason, you're, you're going to have architecture, you know. And if you ever want to change it, if you don't have architecture, if you want to change it, you're going to get the architecture one way or the other. You have to recreate it. So I, I mean, so the, the metaphorical argument is a pretty good argument if they'll hold still for a while. People want me to talk to their general management. I say, uh, give me a half a day. Jeez, we can't do that. How about 15 minutes? I forget, I'm not going to bother. So, well then, okay, how about an hour? No, I want two hours. You know, we're in negotiating. Okay, so, you know, if, if, they, if the general management people will hold still long enough to hear the basic introductory argument about what the environment looks like, basically, the, their reaction tends to be, why didn't somebody tell me that? Well, chief, you never held still long enough. You were wanting to, you want to you get the last bullet on the last slide all the time. You, you don't. You're not taking the time to understand the construct the argument, the construct that that helps you figure out what to do about the abstract idea. So that's really another another good good point. Okay, I think you have a very crowded I, you know, agenda. I, I don't know what they have planned for me, but. Uh, <laughs> so. I, you know, I, I'm just, you know, point me in whatever direction you want to go. And it's, I, I feel really strongly about this issue.